Hello, welcome back to Rust 101. This is video 48. My name's Andy. I hope you are doing well today. I wish you well. We are doing the third exercise on unsafe code. We're going to do a tagged union. All the instructions are in the file. Let's have a look at the file. Here it is. Okay, so um, what this is doing is we're going to implement our own version of result. Um, and instead of using options and or whatever, you know, instead of using like enums as if they already exist in the language, we're going to kind of pretend that enums don't exist and we're going to do it ourselves. And interestingly, um, we're actually going to make a result type that has exactly the same memory layout as the equivalent type from a programming language called Rock, which is like this cool, um, simple, functional, it's very functional and friendly. I've just Googled it. It, it looks really cool and exciting, uh, like a young uh, exciting language, which is pure functional, as I understand it. And it lays out stuff in memory in exactly the way that this has been set up. So in theory, we could use like some kind of foreign function interface or something to talk directly to Rock. Um, we're not doing any of that. All we're doing is implementing a result type that works the same way as the result type built into Rust, but it is implemented explicitly using a struct, a tag, and a union. So let's look at what this looks like. So we have this thing called rock result, which is basically the, the main thing we're implementing. It has two generic um, types. Um, and it has inside it, it has a tag, which is basically says, is this okay or error? And it has a payload, which is either the okay value or the error value. And that can, that give, that uh, takes these either the T for the type, like the okay type or the E for the error type. So this is the same structure as a result. When you're using result in Rust, um, it's always got these two, um, uh, things, the OK value and the error value, right? So, um, same as that. So, uh, rock result tag, as I said, doesn't use the generic types. It is just literally an enum, which says OK or error. Now, I said we were going to pretend that enums didn't exist, but I guess we're pretending that, like, clever enums that contain values don't exist, and only this very simple enum, which you could imagine is just an integer for, like, 0 for OK and 1 for error, or the other way around. Um, okay, so we've got this tag saying... If I've got a rock result, what type is it? Is it OK or error? That's what tag does. And then we've got payload, which is holds on to either the OK value or the error value. And this is a union, which I think we talked about a little bit, but a union is basically something which either contains this OK or this error, and not both, but it doesn't know which it contains. So unlike an enum, which knows which one it contains, a union is this low-level structure which contains one or the other, we don't know which, which means that you could really get it wrong, right? You could... If you accidentally thought it had an OK in it and it had an error in it, that would be bad. And yeah, as they talk about here, um, both of these are, are manually drop types. So basically, we should only drop the OK, error, OK value if we've got the OK value. We should only drop the error value if we've got the error value. OK, and then what we need to implement is drop. So like I was just saying, we need to Im we need to drop the OK value if we're holding on to an OK value and drop the error value if we're holding on to an error value. Um, we also need to figure out how to implement clone. Uh, they've implemented unwrap for us. So, um, and what's the difference between these input blocks here? Oh no, yeah, these, sorry, these are implementing particular, um, traits, whereas this is just a general implementation of rock results. So it has an unwrap method, um, which they've done for us, which basically says if it's okay, then just return the okay value inside the payload. And if it's an error, you shouldn't have called unwrap, right? And then we've got unwrap error, which does the opposite thing, like assumes you have an error in there. And then, okay, which, oh, which constructs, yeah, constructs a result by passing in a T and just wrap it up as an okay. And error does a similar thing. And then is okay is just a Boolean. Oh, look, I've done that for us. Basically say, if it, if the, if the tag is okay, then this is okay. So we can do something similar for error. And then map, which means call a function on the thing, but only if we're okay. Otherwise, just leave us in the kind of error state. A couple of other things they want us to implement. They want us to be able to turn a rock result into a real result, like a, a standard Rust result, which is what this is. And they want us to be able to convert in the opposite direction. And we've got some tests checking this stuff all works. So um, we make an okay value, and we check it's okay. Uh, and then we also use from to create a result from it and check that's okay too. Okay, so this is testing not just is okay, but also result from, which I guess is 
Uh, cool. And then same for is error. And then map. It was like calling a function on the thing inside. Um, I guess we should also test that map on an error value works out. Okay. I don't see a test for that. And then cloning an OK and cloning an error. Let's add one test for mapping on an error just to help me feel a bit less worried about that. I'm sure there's lots of other error cases we could look at as well, but let's just do this one. Um, so let's just say it went wrong. We hold a 13 in there. Let's hold a minus 13 in there just for blah. And then when we call map on it, then it should still be an error at the end of that. And it should give us a minus 13. Like so. Right, and it hasn't changed type. So map returns a result of string comma. This this OK is now a result of string comma um, I128, right? But because this remained an error type, this is not a string here. And that type checks, so we're OK with that. All right, so that's all good. The other thing I want to do before we get really properly started is I want to get rid of a load of warnings saying stuff is not used. So we have a main method at the moment that doesn't doesn't actually do anything. So let's have our main method do something. Um, by let's just have it do this for a start. Make ourselves a result. Maybe we'll map it too. Um, like so, and then maybe we'll print it out. Um, do, do we have a debug implementation? Uh, it doesn't implement debug. All right. Um, well, let's just do, oops. Let's just do, let's print out is okay of it. We don't need to implement result for it. Okay. Now we're still going to have some warnings because we haven't done some stuff that's, um, oh, we haven't used some variables as well. So if we quieted it down enough, well, I guess we could, we could do a bit of unwrap, unwrap error. Um, or some other stuff like that, right? We could do unwrap, unwrap error, and is error, and then we'd have a few fewer warnings. So um, let's just do an OK dot unwrap here, um, and then let's let's make ourselves an error type. So let error equal rock result error. Let's use minus thirteen again just to be clear and then we're going to do basically the same kind of stuff so this will be like okay dot is okay and this is going to be error dot is error we better call it is error on it and We'll unwrap error on this. And that should all work fine. So if we actually run this actually now, it will, f it will crash because there's a load of to do's in the code, but at least we got rid of some of our warnings. And I think the rest of the warnings will probably go as we start implementing stuff because they're warnings about not using variables and things like that. Okay. So. Shall we just start at the top and try and implement drop? So this is probably the hardest bit, the bit that I understand the least, but basically it's going to be match on self.tag. So we're going to do different things based on um, whether we're okay or not. And if we're okay, then we're going to drop. I don't know how you manually drop. Yeah, we should check that self dot Okay, dot. No, no, self dot payload dot okay dot. I mean, can we just drop it? What does it say? What does, what does the documentation of manually drop say? It says a lot of stuff about how manually drop is just exactly like a T. Um, in many ways to the compiler. But T 
doesn't actually tell us how to drop the thing inside, I think. So, we can look at the methods on it, and we may need to go look at the documentation. I mean, maybe DREF is enough. We really need to do something. We need to check that this thing is really getting dropped. Well, that gives us a reference to a T, so that's no good. What about into? Well, it doesn't know what it's getting, it's turning it into. I was expecting a method called like, um, you know, drop or something. I mean, what happens if we just drop it? We're going to need a test that checks this works. Or at least, or maybe, maybe not a test, maybe just uh, something to print out in. Um, okay, so it's unsafe, but also we can't move out of it. So if we just lock it, put it in an unsafe block, it's unsafe because obviously dropping this thing, we want it to be unsafe, right? Because dropping it is not allowed, but we're also taking this OK out of our union, so that's no good. All right, we need to look up how to drop a manually drop value. Rust drop a manually drop. Value. Ah, oh, I guess we want into inner. Now, why was I not seeing into inner in my list of things? Yeah, so here's where we actually drop something. Oh, I guess you can't call it as a method. You have to call it as a... Because it's like special... Like, it's kind of dangerous, I guess. So, let's try manually drop into inner. I'm guessing this is going to be unsafe. And then we just have a semicolon at the end, probably. No. Doesn't like that because we own... self.payload we need to take it out somehow how are we going to get this payload out of self okay this you know, this this thing is held on to by results. And we want to just, like, take it out. And say, that's it. We don't need you anymore. Drop takes a mutable reference to self. So we can't, like, destroy. Okay, but I guess we could swap it with something else. Um, but we, what are we going to swap it for? Like, like anything else is also going to still contain something that then would need to be dropped in some way, I guess. We need a bit more help from this yeah so this example doesn't help us because we, we are allowed to transfer ownership of that thing so I'm wondering whether we need to do some kind of swap here or is it just because we've got the reference to tag what if we did this outside still not okay what if we took a mutable reference to that thing no it needs to actually take ownership of it 
Can we? Is there some um, method on a union which lets us say, I want. No. So let's just say, let's get a hold of the payload first. So I'm not sure this is particularly an unsafe um, problem that I'm having here. Can I clone this? No. No, there's no way of getting a clone method on it. So I feel like I need to swap. I, I'm, I'm really... Um... I really don't know whether this is right, but let's make ourselves some, some kind of new union. Um, how do you make a union? Uh, how do you make a union? Have we got an example? Ah, oh, manually drop take. Okay, uh, this is what we want. All right, I should have looked forward a bit. We want to take the thing out of the payload so that we can drop it. So I think this is the thing. Right, so. It needs to be in an unsafe block. Get rid of this stuff. Take the thing out. So now we have... All right, um, just need a semicolon at the end. Um, so now we have, like, there's a warning here, which is, we're not doing anything with it. So let, let's get hold of it. So now this OK is just a T. So now we can just drop it. Like so. Right, so if if self is a um if self is a manually drop is an okay, so we got into this branch, then take the okay value out of payload, put it into a variable, which we will just drop because it's just that's just normal that you drop things if you don't use them. So the other case is going to be basically exactly the same. Also going to be unsafe. If it's an error, take out the error value. Now we would have a crash here if we didn't change this. But as long as we do this right, we know that every time the tag says OK, the thing inside the, is act, the union is going to be the OK thing. And every time the error is uh, the tag, then the error thing is going to be in there. So I really want to check that if I drop something, um, it actually gets dropped. So let's write ourselves a little bit of debug code that helps us here. Um, print on drop, uh, which is going to import drop. And it's going to have a drop method, which doesn't do anything clever, except uh, it prints out dropped. In fact, let us allow ourselves to have some kind of name in here. Um, and then we can do self.name. Right, so now we know what we're dropping. So let's make ourselves... Oh, let's, let's not do this. Let's do it near the main method. I don't think we're going to do this in tests. We could we could do tests which modify some piece of state and check that the thing really got dropped. And that would be better. Um, but we're going to do something simpler. So let's make a rock result which contains a print-on-drop 
whose name is uh, a dot to owned and let's call this pod OK and let pod error equal rock result error with a print on drop with a name of B and then we're just going to drop these two things which which, which oh, what have I done wrong um, which would be fine what's wrong with this Type must be known at this point. Oh, we don't know the error type. Okay. Let's imagine that it has an error type of I32, and this one has an OK type of I32. And we don't need to specify the other thing because it knows the other thing from the thing. So now we've got these two things. Now let's just drop them. And just for fun, let's drop pod error first. Just to, I don't know, just because it feels interesting to mix up the order. Oh, that's not, that's not mixing up the order. That would be mixing up the order, right? Because OK got created first, so it gets deleted last. So let's run our program and see whether the drop part, that we'd better comment out the rest, hadn't we? Because that's not, it's all going to crash. Let's run our program and see whether the drop, oh no, not that much. Um, see whether the drop part that we've just written is actually dropping our stuff. So lots of warnings about stuff not being used. And we panic at, we panicked and printed out drop day. Interesting. Uh, okay, so we panicked at line 65. So that we haven't actually started constructing things yet, so we can't drop them. Yeah, so we've got to have this okay thing at least work before we can do anything else. So that will soon help us understand whether we've done our drop correctly. And yeah, we definitely could write test that check. Um, basically keep some variable somewhere and say, um, update this variable when you get dropped. And then we could check that that variable got updated. All right. So let's follow along this path of trying to check whether our drop code works by um, figuring out how to create a new rock results. It's going to have a tag of um, OK, because this is the constructor where we construct the thing that's OK. And it's going to have a payload of a rock result union. Now, how do you... Ah, oh, you make it like this. OK. Um, it's going to have a manually drop containing V. So I think it's as simple as that. We want an OK one, so we give it the OK tag, and the payload is a payload with an OK in it. Uh, let's see whether we get further with running. So now it says dropped A, and then we crash when we tried to create B, but B also got dropped, which is fun. Although B got dropped first because we hadn't yet got to the drop code because we panicked, I think. So it's interesting, isn't it, that this panic actually causes some stuff to get dropped. Um, yeah, it depends on what type of panic mode you're in, I think, whether that will happen or not. Things are not guaranteed to get dropped after a panic, for sure. Okay, so let's make an error type. Uh, if we mess any of this stuff up, it's really going to go wrong, right? So if we create a union containing um, a... Oh, that should be error... Um, a union containing an error, but with a tag that says OK, our drop code is going to crash. We did that unsafe stuff. Let's go back to our drop code. We did that unsafe stuff in drop where we said, um, we know when it's OK, payload contains OK. So this unsafe thing is all right. Oh, we haven't written a comment, have we? All right, let's write a comment. Safety. Um, uh, if tag is OK, payload must contain OK. And basically the same thing here. If tag is error, 
error it must contain error and that's actually it's only true because we're making sure it's true and the way the place where we're making sure it's true is exactly this code we're writing here whenever we construct a self and i think these are the only places apart from maybe clone or something um we make sure that whenever we have an okay tag then payload has okay in it and whenever we make an error tag error it hasn't payload has an error in it so that should work let's try our running our code and look, A got dropped before B, and there's no error anymore. So we are successfully both constructing things and uh, dropping them. Let's just double, triple check that by undoing our implementation of drop and checking that it doesn't print that stuff anymore. Yep, so the code runs, uh, but those values just don't get dropped at all. They just leak. Because we've, we've wrapped them up in manually drop, which means I don't want the compiler to do the work for me. I want to figure out whether they get dropped or not. Let's, just for fun, let's also introduce a bug here. Let's try dropping the error part of payload when actually the payload is a union that contains an OK. I wonder what's going to happen. Um... Some something. Okay, it, yeah, in this case, I guess we just dropped something that didn't make any sense and we got away with it. It didn't crash. Maybe if we ran in release, it would crash or something. Yeah, so basically unpredictable results. Like, like I said, if, um, if you do stuff in an unsafe block, which is not safe, then you basically can't predict what the compiler is going to do. In this case, it seemed to produce code that did nothing, which is, uh, not great for finding bugs, but there you go. All right, so we skipped over the clone method. Um, so let's try implementing clone. So we need to basically say, if we've got a rock result, then make another rock result. Um, like so. The tag's going to be the same as the other one's tag, right? Do we need to call clone on that? Doesn't do any harm. And then the payload. Can we just clone a union? Probably not. No. So we need to, I guess, do the work of, based on the tag, I mean, maybe this match should be outside, but based on the tag, we either make a union of OK. And we know in here we can get the OK out. And can we clone it? Maybe we can clone a manually drop. Not sure. We don't know whether the T inside is clone or not. This is interesting. I don't feel like... Um, like I'm assuming for, when we're implementing clone, we want to take ownership of the T or the E that's inside here. But those T and E are not clone. So I don't see how we do this. If we said this, we could clone it. Right? Now we've just got the problem that this is unsafe, right? In fact, it's just this bit that's unsafe, I think. And... No, 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 okay. Uh, maybe this... Is this okay? Yeah. Um, so now we've said, look, you can clone stuff inside this result. Therefore, we can clone this. I think I think this is just an oversight in the exercises. I think you're going to need to be able to clone both E and uh, T to be able to clone the result. The other option would be to um, make a result which is still pointing at the same underlying memory in some way. Um, yeah, I don't think that's possible. I also think it's not wise. So let's do it. And we need to make more comments about... Um, why this unsafe is okay.
But yeah, we can clone it because we said that E is clone. So let's do a little safety comment. Can we put a comment here? Safety. Um, it's the same. It's the same as what we wrote before. Where did we write that? Here. If the tag's set to OK, we, we assume the payload is OK. And if the tag is set to error, we assume the payload contains an error. And the reason this is unsafe is because this, this thing here, looking up something inside payload, which is a union, is only, it's only correct to do if we know that the, that, that is the, the variant of the union that is being used. Okay. So that was clone. That looks to me like a reasonable implementation of clone. So maybe some tests might pass. Well, no, because we're crashing at some other thing that also happens in that test, I think. So let's have a look. So yeah, I would break these tests up a bit um, if I were doing this, but we'll follow through for now. So let's try and get at least one of our tests to pass. So let's try making a result from a rock result. So it's going to be match self.tag again. It's always going to be um, no value.tag. It's always going, we're always going to be matching on that tag, right? And if it's okay, then this is going to be a result. It's going to be an okay result, which we can write like this. And uh, it's going to be value.payload.okay. And this is going to be unsafe again. And I think that's it. Oh, no, no, we need to do, we need to take it out. Yeah. Manually drop uh, drop take okay so which bit is um, unsafe yeah this is unsafe too so all this is going to go in an unsafe block. Like so. And many drop take is supposed to take a mutable reference. So we need that, I think. All right. And that means value needs to be mutable. Okay, I think that's right. And again, the same comment, the same safety comment is going to be valid. Let's double check that it really is. So if if the tag was OK, then payload must contain an OK. And also it's therefore OK to like manually drop it. The reason why take is um, unsafe. Well, apparently we could use into inner. I don't know. I think this looks okay. This function semantically moves out the contained value without preventing further usage. Leaving the state of this container unchanged. It's your responsibility to ensure the manually drop is not used again. All right, that's okay. Uh, right, because this value is getting consumed by this code. So let's just have another safety comment. Safety. Um, value is dropped at the end of this function so is not moved not used again all right so um if i were doing this for real i would take a lot longer to understand what manually drop really does before i'd be completely happy with this i'm pretty sure this is this is the right pattern but um yeah it, uh, I don't want you to have to sit and watch me reading the documentation of manually drop, but I'm a bit uncomfortable with how much I understand it at the moment. So let's just do this. If the tag is error, the payload must contain error. And the same comment about um, manually drop take. Oh, by the way, this, these safety comments should probably be um, like, 
We should break up these comments so that the you know that the second one is talking about take and the first one is talking about getting the okay payload out. But you get the idea. You got to write a comment. You got to make it clear what's going on. All right. So now I think uh, turning a rock result into a result should work, and we might therefore have a passing test. No. Instead, we have a crash. Double free detected. So we've done something terrible. Um, oh dear. All right. Well, let's get rid of an unused import while we think. So I guess, um, value is getting dropped after we take it. Is that what's happening? Yeah. So what does manually drop drop do? Takes it out and gives you a T. What does drop do? It doesn't give you anything back. Yeah. So we do want to take, we do want to take it out from payload, but then we want to say, just don't do anything with it. So I guess we need to read the documentation for manually drop, is what we're saying. <laughs> so um, you've, you can either call into inner, or you can call take. So let's try into inner because this extracts the value, which is what we want in this case, right? And then it can get dropped later and nothing will happen, I think is what this means. This allows the value to be dropped again. Instead of using manually drop drop to manually drop the value, you can use this method to take the value and use it and then it gets dropped. Whenever possible, it's preferable to use into inner, which prevents duplicating the content. Safety. This function semantically moves out the contained value without preventing further usage. Okay, so I think into inner is safe. Yeah, so that's what we want. All right, so this is, we can make this much better. We don't need to, um, does it still take immutable reference? No, it takes the actual thing. So this this has the semantics we want. Okay, so this is what we wanted all along. Um, no. This is not giving us what we want. So into inner takes a manually drop. Uh, which is, this is exactly what we want, but it won't let us do it because value is like still a valid thing here, so we can't kind of destroy it by just taking bits of it out. Um, unless we could somehow get hold of payload. Um, or yeah, the, the, this is why I was talking about swap before. Now, how did I solve this before? Put this back because I, I'm suspecting now that there is something about we are going to use take, but yeah, how did we solve this before? Um, here's where we cloned it, here's where we take something out. So in this case, um, So we could, yeah, so actually, in this case, I think we can just call drop, right? Let's see. Because I think take, take and drop are the same. And drop is safer because, still unsafe, but it's safer because um, you don't get hold of a reference, so you, you don't have this problem of like two things having a reference to the same thing. Let's double check that that runs. Yeah, it still drops A and drops B. But we're still going to have this problem that our from 
conversion is it's dropping the OK value after we've already taken it and given it to the results. I'm pretty sure that's what it's doing. Um, so we, I guess, need to maybe leak it. Um, if we put our value into a, a box, like this, first of all, let's just check we can do that. We're not going completely mad. Uh, and then we don't use it, we'll use the boxed value everywhere else. I guess this needs to be mutable. Then I think now we've got the same problem as we had before, because this box value is going to get um, dropped as well as this new result is eventually going to get dropped. But if we just um, leak the box, this might be going completely mad. There might be a way better way of doing this. I think maybe it's, is it box colon colon leak to do this? Yeah, then I think this is so nuts, isn't it? Um, Well, we better do the other half to make to find out whether we've done the right thing or not. Um, oh, well, I guess we can do this better than this, can't we? But if we just put the answer into here and then return it, and then we can leak the box. And this is not unsafe, by the way, because um, it's not considered unsafe to leak um, something. It, like, it doesn't cause any crashes. It just wastes memory. So, how does that go? Okay. Uh, one test passed. So, I think, look, so the is okay test passed, which is the one we were trying to get passing. So, I think this is okay. Um so we can say safety B value is leaked at the end of this function, so it's not used again. So this is for safety of union access. And this is safety of take or manually drop. Um, like this, and then the same stuff for the bottom, which I won't make you watch me typing. But basically, we're saying it's okay to get it out of okay because the tag is okay, which I feel pretty confident about. And then, um, here we we're trying to say it's okay to call manually drop take, which takes the value from the manually drop container out. Um, it's primarily intended for moving out values in drop. Well, we're not in drop, so that worries me slightly. Um, but this lets us take stuff out and do something with it. Whenever possible, it's preferable to use into inner because that prevents duplicating the content. Whereas what we've done here is we have duplicated the content. Um, so this function semantically moves out the contained value without preventing further usage. So our original container looks the same. So essentially, what we're doing is something very unsafe, which is saying, give me this manually drop OK value and so that I can use it for stuff, but also leave it where it is. So that means now two things have a reference to this same thing. 
Is that really true? I think maybe it is. I'm not, I'm really not sure. So, uh, so that means it was getting, we were crashing because we were dropping this uh, value at the end of the, um, function. And that meant we were dropping this, uh, well, because we got this drop code, we were dropping this payload okay uh, or payload error at the end. So, but actually it belongs to someone else now because we called manually drop tech. So what we're doing now is saying leak the value, don't call drop on it. Um, uh, because this R that we're returning now owns it and it will drop it at the right time. So let's double check that. Um, yeah, this is interesting. Let's check whether um, if we call drop after doing this from thing, um, like so. So if we convert these two rock results that we've made into result results and then drop them, they should still get dropped. Whoops, and they do. Dropped A and dropped B. So it looks like our code is working. Um, we, I guess we can't be sure that we're not leaking something somewhere, but it looks it looks reasonable to me. So yeah, do let me know in the comments if I've made a mistake or I, what I suspect is that there's a much better way of doing this. Um, but yeah, we do have this problem. The value is going to get dropped at the end of the function. So this is why we move value into this box, which we then leak. Um, yeah. All right. So. Yeah, like I say, let me know if I missed a uh, straightforward way of doing this properly. Uh, this is uh, this is this is harder than I thought it would be. So probably there's a better way. All right, uh, what's the next test we want to make pass? So we have um, we have test is okay passing, but test is error failing. So let's see if we can make test is error pass, which should be a matter of just making is error work correctly. So return a boolean saying, is this the error thing? Well, that we do that if the tag matches error. So that should work. If we've written the, enough surrounding code for it to work. Yep, that worked. So now we've got two, two things passing. So cloning is not yet done and mapping is not yet done. So let's do cloning first. That should probably be simpler, right? And um, we also have unwrap error not implemented. Uh, what test un unwraps an error? Yeah, oh, the mapping one. Okay, so we'll get to that. Let's do clone. So, hold on. We've implemented clone. Why is our test not passing? Test clone okay is failing because... Or uh, let's say test clone error, since that's the one at the top of the list, is failing because it panics on line 79. Oh, so unwrap error happens now. Fine. Okay. So, um, so we've got unwrap. So this is going to be very similar to unwrap, but it's assuming that error is the interesting case and okay is the bad case. So we can take all this stuff, put it in there. We can say called unwrap error on an OK. And we can take out the error part of the payload if we're in the error part. And we should have some safety here. It's the same comment as before. If the tag is error, the payload must contain error. While we're here, let's add a safety comment here. If the tag is OK, payload must contain OK. Now, this is calling manually drop take. And we're not having to leak this value. 
so I feel like there's something wrong with well the way I converted the thing to a result because this seems to have the same problem to me and it doesn't crash in that way let's think about that in a second thread panicked because of an abort um, alright, so something bad happened um, which is yeah, weird, isn't it? because this looks the same as unwrap which was an implementation provided for us could it be this double free thing that we're um, that we found before, just crashing in a different way? Or have I done something silly? If our tag is okay, then we've been asked to unwrap error, so we're going to panic, so that's all fine. So the question is, if the tag was error, we know that this thing is an error, and we return it. So it should be okay. We have the same problem we had before of um, drop now being called also on on payload because it's called on self after the, the end of this function. Um, that's the only bug I can see. So I guess our first theory then is that this implementation we had of unwrap is not okay and it needs to do something more like what we did um, before, but uh, this seems surprising because this code is written by people who know what they're doing, I think. But let's try it. Let's just call this B self. We could call this self, but that would be really confusing, wouldn't it? So take hold of self in a box, um, leak it. at the end and then return R which is going to be created by calling a leak and this should be B self and this should be B self and we need a semicolon and then I think we're there and now it doesn't need to be mutable so same thing, take hold of self, um, do stuff with that boxed self, and then don't clean up that boxed self at the end. Okay, that actually fixed our problem. So that really makes me think we need the same stuff here. So I guess what we could do to confirm this is we could call unwrap on one of our types that tracks whether it's being dropped and check whether it gets dropped twice, and then we'd know we found a bug in the implementation. So, let's call unwrap on pod OK. And let's get rid of pod error for a second. Let's get rid of the other stuff, in fact, for a second to make sure we're OK. And, yeah, we can't, um, can't put it in a variable if we're going to no, we can. So pod OK should now be a print on drop, right? What have we done wrong? Oh, we've got, what we've done wrong is we don't need this anymore. OK. And um, we won't do any explicit dropping either. We can just let it drop itself. So now... Uh, Okay, and the, yeah, the, um, all right, let's unwrap in two steps. So let's put the type signature back, and then we'll just say let pod equal pod okay dot unwrap. And warp. And we won't drop either of those explicitly. 
they're just both going to get dropped. So now pod OK and pod are going to be dropped. What's its problem? Oh, yeah, this should be a rock result. So now, yeah, we're not, we're not doing the conversion to uh, result anymore. And we're just going to drop pod as soon as we created it. So we've made a print on drop um, named A. We put it into a rock result. And then we consume that rock result to put the answer into pod. But the print on drop is getting moved from one to the other. That's the idea. So um, we should not um, be dropping it twice. We should be dropping it once. Ah, but we dropped it, and then we dropped something that was completely corrupted and crashed. So I think there's something wrong with unwrap. The only other possibility is there's something wrong with our drop code. Um, and it, unwrap was written with an expectation that um, it wouldn't work this way. So let's have a quick look at our drop code. Thing is, our drop code is really straightforward. In order for us to make our drop code work differently, we would have to kind of tag this thing in some way to say, don't actually drop it when you drop it. Um, because this is just straightforward, right? We have a manually drop. So we call manually drop drop if it's okay. And we call on the, on the okay value if it's okay and on the error value if it's error. So this drop implementation looks correct to me. It looks to me like the bug here is in unwrap and unwrap should be doing the same thing we're doing here, which is putting getting hold of self into a box which we're going to leak. Um, because the actual value has been moved or effectively moved into that manually drop. I was complaining about unwrap error not being used. Okay, so now when we run, it only gets dropped once. All right, so um, yeah, Please let me know in the comments if I've completely misunderstood what's going on. Clone OK is still failing because it panics at a to-do. So that's OK. We'll get to that. But um, things seem to be working better. Yeah, not really unsure whether I'm, a, I'm completely misunderstanding here, but we'll see. OK. So uh, line 125 was where... All right, so map is, so the clone OK function is panicking at line one, two, five. So clone OK is using map, is that right? Um, yes. Fine, all right, so we've got to get map working before that test is going to pass. All right, so uh, I guess We'll get, we'll do that. We'll just push on with the next test. So map is going to take in a rock result, do something with the thing, if it's okay, and then return a rock result. So, uh, hopefully this is more straightforward. Let's do the usual thing. We're going to match on self.tag. And if it's error, then it's it's just, we're just going to return self, maybe. Can we do that? No, 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 because it has a different type. So we're going to have to build it. So it's going to be a rock result with the same tag and the same payload. Um... All right, it's going to have to be not not quite the same payload. It's a it's a rock result union, so this payload thing with the error type of um, self dot payload dot error, and that's unsafe because 
We don't know for sure. It's an error. So we need the same comment we had elsewhere, which is we checked the tag so we know this is fine. So this will be unsafe. But we check the tag so it's fine. Unsafe with an F. Oh, and again, um, we could clone this. No, we're consuming self, so we ought to be able to just take it out of self. So I think we need another manually drop take. And again, I'm worried we're going to be leaking, we're going to be dropping self at the end, so. Um. Uh, should we just, no? What have I done wrong? What's it complaining about? A reference, we're giving it a reference to a manually drop of manually drop. Because error is a manually drop of E. That's, that's really confusing me. Let's see what the compiler on the command line gives me. I think it, the problem actually is that the type. No, it's saying the same thing. We expected a mutable reference of a manually drop of a manually drop. Okay, so something else is wrong. Um, we should be returning. The return type should just be a manually drop of um, E. Okay, I'm fully confused. So let's leave it like that and see whether the other half of the match helps us here. So this is also going to return a rock result with a tag and a payload. Tag of error, because otherwise we break all our assumptions. And a payload, which is a union with an OK in it. And it's got to be an OK with type U. So it's going to have to run F, because F takes in a T and gives back a U. So we're going to run F on the the OK value, but we need to take it out first. Or maybe it's an into inner in this case. Manually drop into inner of Yes, maybe. I mean, I feel like this is never going to work because it doesn't work for any of our other cases. So I'm, I'm really confused why the types of this are so wrong. Um, So let's break it down. So what we do to break it down is we'll do some type declarations in here. So we'll say let r, which is a something, equal rock result. So r is a rock result of u comma e, right? And there's a semicolon there, and then we Return that R. Okay, so it's the same problem. 
Okay, self so payload to OK is a manually draw. Oh, so hold on. Yeah, this time we need to we need to wrap up wrap it up in a manually drop like this. Call F on the actual thing, um, and then wrap it up again in a manually drop. And here we just need to somehow move out of self.payload.error into so I mean we could do something like wrap it up again but it still feels like I'm really missing something here because um, oh, this is unsafe looking for oh no it's, you can't move it so you can't call it into it against the same thing it's the exact same thing um, our self is going to get dropped at the end of the thing um, our self still owns this OK, so we can't take stuff out of it. Maybe I'm missing some method on union that lets us take stuff out of it. But we can fix that problem by taking it. Right. But it's unsafe. I mean, all of this, both of these things are unsafe. So we'll wrap them both up. Oh, I did my brackets in the wrong place. How about that? Yep. We we'll obviously need a safety tag. Um, yep. All right. So, I mean, it's not safe at the moment. <laughs> but this part of it's safe. We can at least say, um, if the tag's OK, the payload must be OK. But I think we're going to get a double free again. It's exactly the same problem as we had before. Um, we can get rid of our extra type annotation stuff here since we've figured that out. Okay, so this compiles. I think we've got the same double free problem as before. Uh, all our tests pass, even though we haven't implemented all of the to dos. And how can this be okay? Um, where we we use take, I just feel like it's not. So let's let's try mapping on this thing that prints out when it gets dropped, and it will probably print out twice, I think. Um, so let's try a map on this. Um, we're using map up here, so this should help us. No, 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 no. Um, we need to. Um, we need this our special type. So. Our special type, which is a print on drop. Let's not do anything to it. Let's just call map on it. And now, um, do we even need the unwrap? I don't think we need the unwrap. We just need to say, after I've, um, after I've mapped it, let's drop it. Just to silence the warning, this is not nothing clever. Um, now, I think this is going to crash because it's double freeing. Yeah, yeah. So we have the same problem. So either I've really misunderstood uh, how you get stuff out of a manually drop in a way that doesn't leave it there to get dropped again. Or uh, this needs doing everywhere, this thing of like wrapping it up in a box um, and leaking that box. So maybe after I've finished recording, I will research this and figure out whether I just made a mistake. But let's for now follow the same pattern. Uh, this should be B self. Like so. And we've got to deal with B self in all these places.
Yeah. So just to just to repeat again, where where we are with our understanding at the moment is that whenever you manually drop take, you're essentially uh, sharing ownership between two things, which is wrong and bad, which is this um, this union here and the new thing we're returning this this union here. Um, and even though we're wrapping it in a manually drop, we know that that union is going to drop it, and we know that um, we implement drop on self, so um, that will drop it too. So two things are going to drop the same value, even though it's supposed to be moved from one to the other. Um, so we have to leak that one to make sure it doesn't. And maybe there's some clever thing we can do. Oh, sorry, and then it worked. Um, and all our test bars, even though... We haven't implemented everything. So we're definitely missing some tests. So for example, returning, uh, um, converting from a result to a rock result. It's not tested, so let's test that. Um, I mean, we could just convert back again, couldn't we? Uh, after this assertion, maybe, we could just do let uh, new OK equal rock result from stood OK. Uh, should we clone it? Let's clone it. And then we can assert that OK and new OK. Oh, we don't need to clone it. Uh, we can, it's already been cleaned once, so we can just check that OK and new OK are the same. Mm, no, because these have been unwrapped. Um, so I guess we could clone them before we unwrap them here, and then we'll be able to reuse them later. Should be right, right? And let's do the same thing for the error case to make sure we've covered that too. Clone them so we can reuse them. So let new error equal rock result from std error. And then assert that the new error is equal to the original one. So that would be error.clone equals, no, error.unwrap equals new error.unwrap. These should fail because this stuff's not implemented, right? Yes. And again, I would separate these into separate tests. Um, so please do that when you're doing this thing. So we're going to match on value and if it's OK, then we're going to make a rock result out of it, which has a tag of OK and a payload of a union of OK, V, but it's going to be more than that. It's going to need to be a um, manually drop. A V. And look, we can take this V. Ah, so I wonder whether... Yeah, let's not think about that yet, but maybe there's a clue here as to why we're allowed to take stuff out of value, but we weren't allowed to take stuff out of payload. Maybe we can find some clever way of doing this. So again, if it's an error, it's going to be a rock result with a tag of error and a payload of a union with error as a manually drop of E. And now I think that conversion works. And I think because we consumed value here, 
um, and we use bits of it that the ownership works. So maybe we can do something like that. Okay. Oh, we called unwrap on an error. So there's a bug in our test. Uh, which is, where did we do that? We called unwrap on these and we should have called unwrap error. Because it's an error type. Test still passing. Um, something. Oh, just dead code. So let's, um, let's re-enable our code that just made all the warnings go away. And doesn't need to be mutable. True. And are there any other to do's in the code? No. All right. So the last thing for us to do is to try and figure out how to do this better. Now, what's the best example of this? Yeah. So the unwrap's a good example. So we, um, we boxed up ourself so that we could leak it later. But what we would like to do is consume self. So I think if we do this, basically this is rust. This has nothing to do with unsafe. This is just me being rubbish at rust. But if we match self, um, or could it be match self dot tag, comma self dot payload, maybe in a pair. Then it would be something. So basically, I'm trying to consume self. Uh, this might not work. Um, but what is self? Self is a struct. So can we match on? Yeah, I think we just, let's just match on self. See if we can do this. So if self is a struct containing a tag of, um, okay and a payload, then do something with that payload. And then I think, think um, we're going to be able to consume the, the payload and it will be. So now we can do a manually drop into inner on payload dot OK. Maybe. What's it saying? Um, oh yeah, this should be a, um, a rock result, right? So it's, itself is a rock result with this stuff inside it. So now, um, this might be, if we delete all this code just for a second, because hopefully we don't need it anymore. Uh, and then fill in the other match arm. Oh, well, which we maybe need to do manually. So the other thing that uh, that could be happening here is that we've got a rock result tag error. Oh, that should, yeah, we're missing a colon, that's why it's confused. And payload, and that will do something. Panic. Um, called unwrap unwrap on an error and this is not used that's okay uh, I guess we can just dot 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 here I mean dot dot to say we don't care about the other things in this thing now, what's it complaining about? Cannot move out of self because it implements drop. Yeah, we absolutely want to move, but self implements drop, so we can't move, I guess is what it's saying. This is just unsafe, so we can... Silence this problem. Yeah. Um, 
the point, the whole point of what we're doing is we want to move out of self without calling drop. Um, we want to take ownership of, of this thing. So maybe we could see, maybe we could implement some kind of method called take. Which is a non-dropping rock result. Maybe, I mean, maybe I've just totally misunderstood, but I think this is a real thing. I mean, this is the last exercise. Maybe it's supposed to be this hard. But if we made a take method on rock results, this is all like way off script. So um, if you want to stop the video here, go for it. Um, but yeah, in our code that is just the implementation of rock result, we could write a function called take which consumes, uh, does it consume? No, it doesn't consume self. It takes in a mutable reference to self. No, what does it do? It takes in a self. Yeah, it takes in a self. Um, and then it, and then it makes a box and then leaks it. Uh, and it's going to return a, <laughs> I'm not sure about this. <laughs> Uh, it's going to return a no drop rock result, right? Which is the same thing as a rock result, except it doesn't do anything when you drop it because we've actually, we've promised that we're going to do something. So this is like an unsafe function, right? Unsafe. It, uh, that's not how you spell that. Um, it takes out. Box leak, B self. Where B self is a box. So it takes ownership of self. And then it leaks it. But before it leaks it, it takes the stuff out of it. So we're really doing the same thing. Um, Uh, but this is going to... I feel like this has got the same problem. Let me think it through, though. Um, this this is going to consume self, be self. No, it's not going to consume it. That's the point. It's going to do some unsafe stuff inside, which rips out the manually drop stuff inside there. And then leaks. So if you call this, you're going to promise safety. If you call this, you must drop the contents of no drop rock result of the returned no drop rock result yourself. They will not be dropped. Automatically. Okay. So this from is going to do some unsafe stuff that takes things out of this box using manually drop take. And this, yeah, this would be now a no drop rock result. So yeah, we can, we can push this, this pain out into someone else. Um, or in fact, in fact, instead of making a new type here, we could just return a pair. That might be slightly less painful. So this would be a tag and a union. Um, like so. And then we could just let R be, uh, be self dot tag and be self dot 
payload. And this needs to be some kind of unsafe movement of this thing. Yeah, it would be something like um, manually drop, take. Basically, we found a, a, a way of making a man of of getting this double double reference um, like that. Missing bracket. Um, yeah, there should be a mutable reference. Oh, and it needs to actually, um, it needs to handle the two cases. So it's going to be matching on this tag. And based on those two cases in there, it's going to either be an OK, which is going to look like a union of OK colon this stuff. Or it's going to be an error, in which case it's going to be a union of error. And the same kind of stuff. Can I make you format for me to make my life easier? Yeah. Um, and this should be error, and this should be OK. And this is going to be unsafe. Uh, and self should be mutable reference. Oh, and these should all be B self, shouldn't they? That was the whole point. And this should be mutable. And this doesn't need to be mutable. And this is no longer. You must drop the returned payload yourself. Hang on, have I done anything here? Yeah, because the drop function is on rock result, not on the rock result union. So we're returning a union that you... If you drop it, nothing will happen. Yeah, okay, good, good, good. So, um, why is it not complaining about unsafe here? I guess because something's gone wrong here. Yeah. So this is going to be, instead of being a rock result, it's going to be a pair of a tag and a payload. Like so. Let's just say this is just, don't care. And uh, take itself is unsafe. Right, so let's, let's stop saying that take is unsafe. No, it has to be, it has to be. And because every, because uh, take is unsafe, it means uh, everything inside take is allowed to be unsafe. I think that although I thought that had changed, but maybe it hasn't changed yet. I would prefer to put like an unsafe block around just the little bits of self dot take which are unsafe. All right, so we have we have a theoretical implementation of take, um, which the unsafe stuff it does is exactly what we were doing in other places. It takes the OK out of the payload and wraps it up in a new manually drop to give to um, the return value here, which isn't going to do any clever dropping for us. So this result, rock result union is would normally leak. But when you, when you call this, you promise that you will drop this union stuff that you got out. And the way that we fulfill that promise is we put it into 
a we, we we get it out with into inner and then drop it but we're actually not fulfilling the promise in this half we should actually drop before we panic ideally so let's see if we can do that just for completely oh no before we do that let's see if it works at all okay everything still passes and things appear to be okay from the running so let's just um let's just make sure we fulfill our promise even in the case where we panic by calling into inner on the error value oh and we need comments saying why this is okay as well don't we Uh, let's have that. So it's okay to call um, payload.error because um, we check the tag was error. Um, okay, so it still works. So we can do this in other places and make it a bit less ugly. Like we're still doing the same uh, leaking thing of basically this is our way of avoiding drop getting called on self we're deliberately leaking it we know that's okay because this is okay because the caller promises to drop uh, payload is it really okay because we're still leaking the tag, right? Oh no, are we returning the tag as well? We're returning... We're moving out, we're moving the tag out of self, are we? Or is tag copy? I'm guessing tag is copy, so that's why that's not giving us problems. Yeah, so I think we're still leaking here. So these, these solutions that we have with box leak are actually leaking memory. So this is not good. So uh, there must be another way of doing this better. Uh, I think what I'll do is research it. And if I get anywhere with it, I might make another little video explaining or add some comments to the um, text of this video. Hope you enjoyed. Hope you enjoyed me. Okay, it's a little while later. I've thought a bit more about this stuff. And I've come up with a design that I think is a lot better than what I had before. I think before I was leaking memory with that, um, by leaking that box containing a um, rock result, um, because I was, I think I was leaking the tag part. So, I mean, and well, I think I was leaking. So I think I've got a better design. And the design goes like this. A rock result is a tag and a rock result tag containing a rock result tag just like before. But now payload is an option. So the whole point of this is that we had a problem where we wanted to move stuff out of payload and like explicitly not not do what the code that we'd written to drop the stuff in payload. So we needed a way of saying to the rock result, don't do the dropping stuff. Um, just give me the payload because I'm going to deal with it now. I'm going to do whatever dropping I want to do with it. So actually, option is the perfect answer for this. It's essentially saying either you've got a union in here, which you're responsible for, or you haven't. Uh, and if you haven't, then I'm responsible for it. Now, this is all like semi unsafe because uh, things can leak if you don't do this properly. So it's not technically unsafe because um, it's only about leaking, um, but it feels unsafe. So I've written some comments here. So basically, if you do, if you take this payload out, so you, if you end up with a rock result which has a none in this payload, then number one, you're responsible for dropping the thing that you were given, this rock result union, um, because rock result union itself doesn't have any way of dropping stuff. It's just a union. Um, and also, you mustn't use that rock result that you've got left with this none inside it. So the only purpose of this option is to allow you to kind of break the rock result by saying, nope, I want your payload. Don't keep it for yourself. 
Um, and you mustn't actually use that rock result after you've taken stuff out of the option. Okay, so let's see how, see how this works in practice. First of all, let's look at the drop method. Um, so drop always takes a mutable reference to self. And instead of uh, uh, matching on just the tag, now we're matching on the tag and also whether there's something in the payload. If there's nothing in the payload, uh, essentially this is the case where someone has emptied us out. We're like an empty rock result in my terminology so there's nothing to do if we do have something in the payload we do basically what we did before uh, we call manually drop drop on the either the okay or the error value based on the tag so that's pretty straightforward and looks quite nice i think like it's perfectly readable uh, and then things get much better later on so first of all clone is quite uh, doesn't have many changes um, you do have to match on the tag and the payload so you can get hold of the payload whether or not it's some or none if it's none then we just clone it. We could actually panic here saying you shouldn't clone a um, an empty rock result, but it kind of doesn't do any harm to do this. If you've got some kind of payload, then clone the OK value if it's OK, clone the error value if it's an error. We've still got this thing where we added these constraints to say you can't clone a rock result unless you can clone the things inside it. I still think that's the only way of doing this. Uh, and then, okay, so now here where things get a lot better. So unwrap before we had to do all this horrible leaking stuff. Now we can do much better. So what we do is we say to self, okay, you're now empty. I'm taking your payload away from you. And that means that self mustn't be used, but it's okay because unwrap consumes self, right? So um, self is not going to get returned from here. We, we have to know self's not going to get returned from here. It's just going to end its life somewhere inside unwrap that drop code is going to get called drop is going to see that payload is now none because what take does is it gives you back the thing that was inside that variable and it replaces it with none so this is a mutable uh, method on on this option payload is an option we call take we have we now have a payload this is now this is also a, a sum like this is also an option of a uh, uh, of a rock result union um, but now we know for sure that self.payload is none. So when self gets dropped, nothing happens. But that means now we're responsible for a dropping payload. We mustn't do anything wrong with it because there's no drop code going to get automatically called. But it's okay. We're going to deal with it. So we match on it. If it's none, we panic saying, oh, you shouldn't have called unwrap on something that we've already broken by unwrapping it. Um, notice, by the way, we're matching on payload, not on self.payload, because we know that self.payload is none, but we're here we've got the payload that we extracted out. So if you called on none because it was already none before we even called this method, because you're reusing an, an empty rock result somehow, um, we'll panic. But the normal case is um, we've now, we can now match on self.tuck and payload, get hold of this payload, which uh, is inside a sum. So now we have this payload and we don't have just a, like a mutable reference to it or something like that. We actually have payload we have taken payload ourselves out of this option we own it which means we can call into inner on it which is safe the unsafe part is looking inside payload and checking that it's okay but that's okay because we, we checked that the tag was okay but into inner is completely safe um, because um, all we're doing is saying i want to have responsibility for dropping this thing again instead of you you instead of manually sorry i want you to have responsibility for dropping this thing again instead of me having responsibility for it um so into inner just means stop stop protecting it from being dropped and actually drop it give it back to me which we then return right because all this is going into um the return value uh, which is t right so we're basically saying give me the t that was hidden inside this payload so i can return it and you you the rust compiler drop it when it needs dropping. So we have taken on responsibility for dropping it uh, suitably because we've returned it. It's going to get dropped later. Um, the other option is that payload contained an error and we're going to panic here because this this whole, this whole unwrap method is all about assuming that it's okay. Um, uh, and so we could just call panic here, but I feel like it's a good citizen, just like we did in the earlier part of the video, to first extract that thing out and drop it immediately. So here there's a semicolon here. We're just dropping this thing. We're getting it out and dropping it. So I guess we can make this clearer by saying let underscore equal. Otherwise we might get warned at some point in future. Um, so, whoops. So just drop it. Um, drop the error, which we know is in there because we're in the error branch. Uh, um, and then panic. Okay. So you can see that unwrap is a, a lot easier to deal with now. We don't, we're not leaking memory. 
So unwrap error is basically exactly the same. Take ownership of the payload, pass that payload in. If we've got a payload call into inner to, to say, say, I no longer want to be protected from dropping this. Um, uh, sorry. And this is the, this is the same thing where we're, we're in unwrap error. So we expect we're going to panic when we're in an okay branch, but first we drop the okay branch. And then this is the, the critical branch, which is we know there's an error in here because we check the tag, um, get that error out, give the compiler back responsibility for dropping it. So we have fulfilled our, our responsibility here, which is that, and every time we call take, we must, uh, be responsible for dropping the stuff that's been put into that manually drop inside that union, which is the payload. Um, what else? Some of this stuff is just straightforward. We just wrapped it up in a sum and a sum. Uh, map is basically exactly the same. So we take responsibility for dropping payload. Um, we match on whether there's something in there. If there is something in there, we own it. So we're now safe to call into inner on it to take responsibility, uh, give away responsibility for dropping it. Then we call F, which is the function we were called, we were asked to map over. And then we put it back into a manually drop. So we're taking, we're taking back responsibility for dropping it, but it's okay because we're wrapping this whole thing up in a rock result, which is, just does have a drop on it. Uh, so, so we'll correctly drop the thing, assuming we coded it right. We'll correctly drop that thing later. Um, exactly the same for, I don't know. It's much easier for the error case. In the error case, we can actually just take that payload error that we have and put it into um, a thing. And again, it's all owned by rock result. So rock result will look after it. So here, this error is a manually drop. So we're just passing a manually drop from one place to another. All we have to check for safety is that we're in the error tag part when we use the error on the payload. So, um, uh, yeah, so from is exactly the same. Take responsibility for dropping that payload. Um, and then, um, yeah, convert it into a T instead of a manually drop of T. But it's okay because the result that we're putting it in, um, yeah, and so not even that it's okay, just that, um, Oh, so we don't need, we don't need these comments anymore. Um, it, all we need to say is, um, if the tag is okay. Yeah. Oh, and we, our unsafe block can get smaller here. That's good. Let's do that. Um, yeah. So all of this was, was in order to basically make our unsafe block smaller because we could use manually drop into inner which is safe because it doesn't create these double references to, um, like two uh, double ownership of this thing. So is there no manually drop take anymore? I think there shouldn't be. Yeah. There's no manually drop take anymore. It's all manually drop into inner. Um, yeah. So here we're just, um, taking, giving the compiler back responsibility by calling into inner and then giving that over to a result, which then looks after dropping it later. Um, so this is all so much better. Um, and then from in the other direction is easy. We just wrap things up with some, all our tests now pass. And the, the hit that we take is, um, we have this ability to call take on a payload and basically put our rock result into an invalid state that should never happen. Um, but from the outside, this is okay because payload is a private field of rock result. So we, we could, even if we made rock result a public struct, we wouldn't need to make payload a public field. So only we are responsible for, oops, did I accidentally call take and then reuse the rock result later? And you can see that every time we call take, um, we, we're always in a, a method that consumes self. And that, that self never gets somehow returned in a different form, right? We're always creating a new thing. Um, like here, we're, we're returning just the actual T, not the self. So every time we consume self, we, we kind of break that rock result that is self by calling take and putting it into this special empty state that should never happen. Um, at the end of the method, it gets dropped and that's okay because our drop method looks at that none and says, well, if there's none in here, we, I won't do anything. Um, and it means that we've got hold of that payload. Um, 
not just as a mutable reference to it, but as something we can actually take ownership of. So we can do this payload here on the match and this sum payload here. Now this payload thing here is actually a rock result union, not a mutable reference to a rock result union or something like that. The reason we can do that is because um, payload doesn't have a drop uh, method. And the reason we couldn't match on, say, self itself is because self has a drop method, like a custom drop method. So you can't just pass ownership for bits of it off to somewhere else like we're doing here. So what we did was modified self so that we took the payload out of it. And then we're able to do this stuff with payload and take ownership of it and call it into inner. Hope that makes some sense. That's probably the most advanced stuff we've done in this um, video series and stuff that lost me the most. I still don't know whether I've got it right. Um, because I actually had to change the implementation of rock result to make this stuff work. Um, so I'm wondering whether there's something I didn't understand about unions or manually drop. That means I could have done this in that way, uh, in the way it was originally written without this extra bit of machinery. But I'm reasonably happy with this extra bit of machinery. Um, we're basically kind of turning off dropping. We're saying to rock result, yes, you have a drop. Uh, method that we've implemented. Um, where is it here? But if my payload is none, don't do that dropping. Only do the dropping if um, there's something in my payload. And that means we're able to say, take, give me your payload, and uh, uh, I'm going to be responsible for dropping the stuff in it. Hope that makes sense. Next time we'll be moving on to uh, another lecture. Um, we finished the exercises on unsafe stuff. Let me know if you saw uh, if you get this better than me and you see what I did wrong or, some, or if you think this is a great solution. Thanks a lot. See you next time.